my interest in girls' education stems from my own experience. Until about the age of 12, I was a chatty, loud, gregarious child. And then suddenly, I found myself shutting down in terms of voice. And in truth, I think it's taken me decades beyond that to recover voice. What I've realized is, because of developmental changes, boys at the age of 12 or 13 began to sort of push outward, which is a natural impulse. And girls have learned that they should pull back to make way for that pushing outward. And so I'm interested in imagining a world in which girls' voices don't get shut down. The key will be whether girls realize their intrinsic capacity. My name is Mira Viswanathan, and I'm the head of the Ethel Walker School in Simsbury, Connecticut. I often joke that when I think of my life as one of a kind of magical serendipity, improbable twists and turns that have led me here to this moment in time. I was born in Madras, India, and grew up as an immigrant in Los Angeles, learning English by watching television. Well, I was very fortunate to have a mother who was incredibly strong, and we were really somewhat unmoored. We didn't have relatives or close friends in this country. We had very little money, we didn't have a car. But throughout it all, she was unwavering, and she was committed first and foremost to her children. And a big part of that was education. And every Saturday morning, the three of us would troop to the public library, and we would each check out 10 books for the week, and march home and read them, and then take them back. And I, to this day, feel as though much of my education was really accomplished through the public libraries. And then I went on to college and university in the Bay Area, came to the East Coast as a postdoc at Brown University, where I spent the next 33 years. Then I embarked on this wonderful new adventure of coming to the Ethel Walker School. The idea of being a student is my lifelong ambition, but since I couldn't be a student at the school, uh, I had to settle for second best, which meant being head of school. To be at this school now, to think about raising a generation of girls who come to expect equal access and to understand that it is their right not to feel impeded is really important to me. Ethel Walker was a proud graduate of Bryn Mawr College, and in 1911, she determined that she would establish a school for girls, a school in which young women learned to be rigorous thinkers, independent in their livelihood, and would aim at the highest level of academic aspiration. What I want to do is continue the legacy by being a school where girls embark on brave new adventures at the risk of falling down, knowing they will one day pick themselves up and try again. Alice Walker has a wonderful poem in which she begins, one must learn to live frugally on surprise. And I think women continue to surprise me. More than any time since the 1970s, I feel that we're at a watershed moment for women and women's social identities. Not simply that notion that ethically or philosophically women deserve a place in the sun, but much more pragmatically, empowered women contribute to everyone's well-being. The hashtag MeToo movement, Time's Up, I welcome these movements because I think they're going to let some light and air into these previously closeted areas in which women purportedly had equal opportunity but not really.
I think the issue of women and grit comes from my own childhood experience. And as I said, we grew up in somewhat straightened circumstances, so there was no time for self-pity because there was no alternative. I think it's good to experience adversity. I can say that now. While you're experiencing it, it's not so fun. But the imprint of it is invaluable for the rest of your life. Education is the most profound social instrument that exists. To think that I'm ahead of school is extraordinarily humbling. All those young faces are watching me and that everything I do is noted and therefore I have to be much better than I really am so I don't disappoint them. And my goal is to be as worthy of it as I possibly can be. And apart from academic classes, there are things I want every girl here to be able to do. To know how to swim. Be first aid certified as they are now. Every girl takes a self-defense course. Every girl learns to write code. She will be able to have a lucrative back pocket skill. I want every girl to be able to give a three minute public speech impromptu on any subject with no ums, you knows, or likes. I'd like every girl to have a passport, and whether you go abroad for two weeks, a month, a summer, a semester, a year, I'd like every girl to have that experience of being a stranger in a strange land. And I tell my students, every day you have to learn at least one or two new things that make you rethink your whole life. One of the most moving passages I know in literature comes from Gustave Flaubert's Madame Bovary. The narrator suddenly interposes and he says, the human tongue is like a cracked cauldron on which we beat to set a bear dancing, when instead we would make the stars weep with our melodies. That's the lesson I'd like to impart to our girls. It's not a, a statement of doom and impossibility for the human race. It's just the opposite. It's a restatement of that poignancy between human aspiration and human limitation, which defines for us all what it means to be a human being in this world. Learning is a struggle. It's about failure. And so those who say, I, I don't want failure, are saying something tantamount to, I don't want to learn. And so if we're committed to the project of education, we have to be willing to be uncomfortable, that we'll just keep trying until we finally get it. The Marines have a slogan, no Marine left behind. I feel the same way about girls and women. And so we will leave no girl left behind in teaching those earlier qualities we spoke of, grit, resilience, the confidence that you will make it.